A and B are positive integers. Keep a track of these little things, right? If A and B are not positive integers, sometimes these questions may not, you may not be able to solve them conclusively, right? Is the sum A plus B prime? That's what we need to answer. Two statements are given. Again, a question which is starting with a B verb, answer should be an yes or a no. When is the data sufficient? If you're able to get a definite yes or a definite no, if I'm able to say that A plus B is certainly prime, I know for sure this information is sufficient. Or if I'm able to say that A plus B can never be prime, in either case the data is sufficient. Answering with a definite no also means the data is sufficient. But I'm saying that, hey, there's one instance where A plus B is sufficient with this data and another instance where it is not, then the data is not sufficient. Start with statement one, 13A equals 43B. So I'm going to write this as what is A by B could be. A by B is equal to 43 upon 13, right? Getting the B down here and 13 down here. So that translates to A is to be equals 43 is to 13. If the ratio A is to B is 43 is to 13, then we can say A is 43X and B is equal to 13X. We need to verify whether A plus B is prime. If A is a 43X and B is the 13X, A plus B is going to be equal to 56X. X is definitely an integer because A and B are integers. 56 is not a prime number. So any product of 56 certainly is not going to be a prime number. Because 56 is not prime, we can conclude that this number is not A plus B is not a prime number. Statement 1 has given us a definite no. Because I got a definite answer, statement 1 is certainly sufficient. Statement 1 is sufficient, answer options B, C, E can be eliminated. It is down to A or D. To decide whether it's A or D, let's evaluate statement 2 alone. Statement 2 tells us that 8A equals 15B. Pause the video here. Analysis is exactly the same as the last one. Check out whether statement 2 alone will give you a conclusive answer. If it does, go with D. If it does not, go with A. We've done this. Let's quickly run through it. I'm going to run through the same process. A by B in this case is going to be 15 upon 8. So A upon B equals 15 upon 8. A is to B is equal to 15 is to 8. So if A is a 15x, B is going to be equal to 8x. We need to check what? Whether A plus B is prime. A plus B in this case would be 15x plus 8x, which is equal to 23x. 23 is prime. In the last case, we had a conclusive 56 not being prime. Yet 23 is prime. If x is a 1, then 23x is going to be prime. If x is any number, any integer other than 1, then 23x is not going to be prime. So can a plus b be prime? Yes. Is a plus b definitely prime? Need not be. So what are we saying? We are not able to conclude. If x is prime 1, then we are saying it's prime. For other values of x, it's not prime. We are saying that both possible cases exist if we know that 8a equals 15b. Statement 2 is not giving us a definite answer. 2 alone is not sufficient. At the end of evaluating statement 1, we were down to a or d. 2 is not sufficient. Rule out option d. We're down to the last one. Just choice a is the correct answer to the question. Before you leave, two things. Sign up as a trial user at wzko.in slash core. So one of the most comprehensive online GMAT course. Get started with a free topic, statistics and averages. Build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Subsequently, pay up and unlock the remaining topics. Lastly, subscribe to the channel youtube.com slash vizaco and spread the word among your friends who are preparing for GMAT. You may also choose to join this channel as a member for a small monthly fee and enjoy member-only perks that come with it and will help you boost your GMAT preparation.